So what exactly Teldata database is basically it's an RDBMS, a relational database management system, similar to other RDBMS, the Oracle, SQL, or DBT. And uh, Teldata is basically only for largest commercial databases. Okay. And it is a good solution for enterprise or data warehouse. So like other RDBMS are good for OLTP and OLAP, but Teldata is only for OLAP, only for data warehousing. It can be used as a small scale system. Like transactional system, data data will not be good yet. And it's an open system. Open system in the sense it can run on multiple platforms like uh, Unix MPRAS, Unix platform basically, Linux operating system and Windows operating system. And it is compliant with ANSI industry standards. Oh, it's uh, just in OLAP system? Uh, uh, it's an OLAP, uh, oh, it's only to uh, uh, store the OLAP uh, database, you're saying similar to an OLAP uh, database, like only for, so no. there is no OLTP data you mean? No. Oh, okay. It can be used for OLTP. Okay, okay. You can use it, but it will not be a good solution because it's very uh, costly as well as designed for any large systems. And uh, it uh, it is compared with ANSI industry standards. So all the syntax and semantics which other database follows, right? Similarly, Teradata also follows the same syntax and semantics. It runs in a singular or multiple mode. We will see what exactly a singular or multiple node means. And the Teradata is basically a database server mm -hmm. with a client uh, client server management. Mm -hmm. And it is capable of, man, uh, of handling uh, many terabytes of data using parallelism features. So the parallelism concept is the fundamental feature of the data database. Okay. And it is capable of supporting concurrently many clients from various platforms using an MPP architecture. Okay. I mean like at a time multiple users can access the database uh, you mean? Yeah, yes. Okay. So basically this is the history of the data. Yeah, it started back in 1975 and uh, it uh, released its first product in 1979. Viva Narbon was the first release and then uh, later in uh, different financial years different different versions of Teradata has been released and like if you see in 2002 V2R5 got released which had major features like uh, partition primary index, rules and profiles, compression techniques and more. And then in 2003, Pi.1, which included user defined functions, binary large objects, and character large objects. In, to, in V2R6, statistics feature was introduced. 2012, in TD12, so query rewrite feature was introduced. In TD13, scalar subquery and no, part, no primary mix feature was introduced. And in TD14, Temporal and uh, columnar features have been introduced. So from version to version, right, there will not be much difference from the user perspective. Only from the system performance and then any uh, issues which have been observed earlier will be fixed in the higher versions or in the patch releases. So basically from the user to uh, perspective there will be nothing much difference unless or until a, a new feature which got introduced which deals with a different syntax. Then only there will be a difference. You need to know that new syntax basically when you are working on that new feature for that particular uh, release and for that particular feature. Suppose uh, uh, temporal feature is there, right? Basically that is uh, that feature handles date data types in a periodic fashion. So it's it's a little bit different syntax. So whenever you are implementing that feature, the syntax will be a little bit different. And then the next slide talks about the architecture of Teldata. Basically how a request processing mechanism internally flows in a Teldata server. 
So if I submit any request, how does the request passing happens in current? If you see the uh, topmost uh, thing, right? Those are the uh, records which the client is trying to insert into the Teradata database. So he's having some number of records, the like total records he is having. And the gray color box which you are seeing, right? This can be treated as a node. A node is a machine. The laptop it can be treated as a node, a machine. A desktop is a node, a machine. So the gray color node which you are seeing is a machine. And it has internal components like passing in, in access module processor, AMP, and then message passing layer. So these are the major components of a Teradata server. So when you install Teradata onto any machine, right, these are the major components which get installed. Now, what's the functionality of parsing engine is? Parsing engine will check the request or request from syntax perspective, semantics perspective, and it will try to do optimization if possible. And then it also has the intelligence to distribute the data. To which particular uh, arm the data should go. So it has that intelligence. So suppose if I have some hundred records, so it has the intelligence to distribute those hundred records across the arms. Message passing layer is like a communication protocol between a parsing engine and app. Those are the two processors. So the communication between those two processors will happen via the message passing layer. And then the last one is the access model processor, AM. AMP is similar to a physical processor basically. So what are the physical operations which the CPU performs right on that disk? Similarly, AMP has that uh, functionality. It performs the basic uh, physical processor functions on the disk. So now in this case, what the user is trying to do is insert those two uh, tool records into a single table. Now Teradata, what it does is it always try to distribute the data across the system in an even fashion. So the complete table records are not stored in a single place. The fact that they are distributed across the system. So what is happening? The tool records they are distributed across the system. So each app is holding them at, at most three records. So that the load is balanced across the system. Now, if I submit any request to the Teradata server, right, what happens? The parsing engine will uh, pick the request. It will see whether, okay, if I sub suppose in this case, right, if I say select star from the table, select star from a particular table. Now, what will happen? Parsing engine will say, okay, the request is fine correct from the syntax and the semantics perspective, then it will broadcast it to all the apps. So all the apps will be holding that request now, select star from table. And each app will be processing that task on the associated disk. So now here what is happening? Single task has been divided into multiple tasks and multiple tasks are executed in parallel. So here what is happening? Parallelly, we are able to execute the task. So this is parallel. So passing in is sending that request via the message passing layer to all the apps, and all the apps are working in parallel. Single task divided into multiple tasks, and multiple tasks executed in parallel. So this is how whatever the request comes, it works in this fashion. Uh, I have one question, Vardhan. Actually, so uh, you are saying this node, right? So the passing engine, the message passing layer, passing, passing layer and the AMP, this all will be on the database server itself or it's on be on the client also? On the database server. Okay. Okay, so from the client machine, we'll be accessing the database server by using yes. some utility. Okay. Yeah. Okay. There will be some uh, client tools like uh, BTIC or SQL Assistant. Okay. So those so, are the components which are from the client side. Okay, okay. So when I write any SQL list from the uh, SQL assistant window, what happens? It will be passed down to the Teradata server 
ओके Oh, collectively they act as a single system. Single okay. system. Suppose if I have two machines, right? Node one and node two. Mm-hmm. Node one is having four amps, and node two is having four amps. Okay. So what happens is whatever the data we have mm-hmm. from the table perspective, they get distributed across eight amps. Oh, okay, okay. Later on, after two years, something my business keeps on uh, expanding, and it is not able to hold the current pace. What I will do? Suppose if I add two more nodes, right? What will happen? The existing data will again redistribute across the 16 amps instead of 8 amps. Oh, okay. So uh, there are two separate physical systems, you say, right? Yeah, physical nodes. Okay. So, like, how do they configure? I mean, basically, like, if there are two different systems, how can the data be distributed uh, evenly in two different systems? Ah, that's the internal component of parsing. Is parsing is it has that intelligence to distribute the data? Okay, okay, okay. So there is one component called hashing algorithm that will do this thing. Okay, okay. It's a hashing technique. Which is which handles uh, all the data types. It has been written very generally. So if the data is unique in nature, the data always try to distribute the data in a even fashion. Any other questions in this slide? No, no. And and uh, basically, suppose. Uh, uh, we we say that each amp is holding the task and executing it. Once a task is finished, that uh, processing is done. That what it will do is amp one will uh, the amp one will send the result set to message passing layer. That means it will send this three record set to MPL. Similarly, amp two will set its result resultant set. So all the resultant sets will be getting in the MPL. We we'll get club into single set. And that results that will be sent to the client from where the request has been received. Okay. And uh, suppose uh, now we are seeing only single table. Similarly, even if there are any other tables, right? Assume there are two tables, T1 and T2. So both the tables, T1 data and T2 data, will be distributed in this fashion. Okay. Across all the amps. Now. If I am submitting select staff from T1, and if you are submitting select staff from T2, what will happen? Passing engine will be having two requests now. One is select staff from T1, and the other is select staff from T2. It will uh, do the request processing for both the tasks parallelly. It will check the syntax and semantics of both the requests parallelly. Once that is done. Via the message passing layer, it will distribute all the two tasks, two requests to all the amps. Now each amp will be holding two tasks: select task from T1 and select task from T2, both executed parallel. And all the tasks, eight tasks, are running in parallel without obstructing each other. So parallelism is built from top to bottom. Passing engine is able to At parallel, message passing layer able to do the request passing parallel, and access module processor able to execute internal task parallel and able to work with other amps in parallel. So parallelism is there from top to bottom. 